Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen for a new video about bash and more precisely we will see this time how we can write bash unit tests and I'm pretty sure you didn't see many unit tests for bash scripts which is I think an error because first of all bash is a weird language um, it has many traps it's easy to create weird behaviors without knowing why so having tests in these cases it's really cool i think so let's dive in um if you watch the other video of this series and i encourage you to do so of course um we wrote a batch a batch script to mirror one directory with another so that the both directories have exactly the same content whatever happened to the source directory. The destination directory will always be the, the exact copy of the source directory each time we run the script. So here I have the script backup v3.sh. I have as well a couple of directories and file. Um, so there is the source directory which should be mirror with the destination directory which is now empty and the source2 directory should be mirrored with the destination2 directory. Makes sense. So what happened if I run my script? Well, nothing happened because um, I need to give an argument to the script which describes what directory should be mirrored with what other directory. And that's the job of a simple CSV file you can create like this one this one describe okay the source directory should be mirrored in the destination directory and the source2 directory should be mirrored in the destination2 directory <laughs> wow wow okay so if we run the script again and we give this csv as argument this time as you can see, destination has exactly the same files and directories than source, and destination 2 has exactly the same stuff inside than in source 2. Very good. So maybe I will need to delete everything in destination 2 and destination for the following of this video. I'm not even sure, but in case. Okay, so now we are back to normal. Very good. So the question is, how to uh, create unit tests for this script. Well, we will use in this video, and I encourage you to use the same tool for um, all your scripts, basically, um, which is called shunit2. The link is in the description, of course, like every file you will see in this video. Um, I've installed it globally because I can just install it using my package manager because I'm using Arch Linux by the way. So um, I just have to do, uh, and you can see that on the bottom of the screen, yay minus s sh unit two, and then my super cool uh, package manager which is yay will pull that from the Arch user repository or AUR. Okay, so I have it now. What you can do as well is going to the project, grab the shunit2 script and copy-paste copy um, in your own directory. No problem. So now, let's create our test file. For that, we will call it backup new uh, backup test.sh. Okay, let me change the order of the window. So on the left, there is a script. On the right, there is a unit test script. First thing first, like every single script we can write, we need a shebang at the beginning. So here's a shebang. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, um, source the shunit2 script. So I do it like that because as I was saying, uh, I have shunit2 uh, installed globally, but if it's, um, if it's local to your directory, you can do a 
source uh, this directory shunit2 of course so only doing that and changing of course the uh, permissions on the file to run it what happens if we run it like that well you have a nice output run zero test okay that's all thank you for watching and have a great day that's how that's how you you write uh, unit tests just by not writing them like that you're sure they will uh, succeed all right so what we can do with sh unit 2 that's the question um i have many things including a snippet which just uh, can show you um, every single, um, I mean, not every single, but some useful function you can use with uh, SHUnit2. So the first one is one time setup. It, it's, run, uh, it's running before all tests. The setup is run before each test. The test equality is just a, a, a dummy test just to uh, show how it works a bit. And I don't think we will need the, this one, the one time teardown to just, uh, which is run, which runs after every test are done, basically. So this one we don't need, and I was sourcing already SH unit two, so I don't need that either. All right. So here you can see as well that you need to uh, give the name of the file here. I'm not sure if it's really mandatory to be honest, but uh, I think it's in the doc. So, you know, for, I'm following the doc here. So now if we run the same test, I'm not sure I saved it. Now it's written. If we run the same test, this time it ran one test, which is the test equality we have here, which tests that one equal to one which is true, surprisingly. All right, so let's write our first test. And what we can try to write is the um, testing the different option of our script. So um, if I run backup script with minus H, it will display some help. So we can test that quickly. Um, how? Well, we could think, okay, let's see if we have some string in the output of our script, proving that indeed it uh, displays some help. So first of all, in the one time setup uh, function, I will uh, create a new um, global variable which is called backup the script. Why? Because I will, of course, call the script a couple of times in my test. And if I want to, um, to change the script name, I don't want to change the script name in every single test. It's, um, it's not practical. So I will just create a variable with the name of the, of the, of the script and then if I want to modify the name I can just modify it there. Um, all right so let's test our help. So let's test option help. Let's say. So yeah I mean we want to assert that the output contains some string so we can use assert contains and uh, we can call our script Oops. like that. But we need to call our script with minus H as well, because it's what we want to test. And then we want to see help appearing in the output. So it works like that. You have an assertion. The first argument is uh, the value you get. And the second argument is the expected value you want for our test to pass. All right. So you can see here, indeed, 
that there is help displayed here on this line. So it should work. So let's try by running our test. And it ran one test and it's a success. Great. If we want to uh, verify that it wasn't help, but um, bonjour. Well, in that case, it will fail, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, because didn't find any bonjour in our output. Thanks God. So we can do that with um, also um, other option. Why not? Um, we can test the version. So um, we can copy that. And you know what? We will just replace help with version. Here we go. And it should work because when I do, when I run my script, uh, with minus V, it just display me version, but it display me version with an uppercase though, so it shouldn't work. Let's try. And it works. So it doesn't differentiate uppercase. Good to know. I didn't know that. But uh, yeah, just to be sure, you know, we can do that version 1.0. Let's run it again. didn't work inversion oh I didn't write it oh yeah 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 my bad it's because I didn't change the, the argument never copy paste code so now if I put version 1.0, it should work. And it doesn't, of course. Invalid option B. Really? That's not true. Oh. I forgot something very important here. I forgot a dollar here. Otherwise, it won't work. I guess. Ah, bash script. That was a pleasure. Yeah, now it works better. So this is fixed. So I want to try um, if I can do it in upper, in lowercase and if it will work, but I'm pretty sure it won't. So if I change version with a uh, lowercase v, and if I run the test, yeah, this time it didn't work. Okay. Okay, so we cre we tested um, the uh, help option, the version. Let's try the dry run too. So we can use the dry run, uh, the dry run option in our script just to um, just to test the script without doing anything. So this time I will type everything to not make mistake uh, minus d, and let's say that. This time we want to see in parentheses dry run because it's indeed what you see if you do minus D here. Oh yeah, I need to give the argument. So you can see here that indeed there is 
dry run at the end of this line. So if we run our test, it doesn't work because I need to give an argument to my script this time. And I need to give the file. So what we will do, we will create a new variable, which will be, um, let's call it uh, deers, because it describes directories, and it will be deer.csv. Indeed. So let's go back here. Let's go here. And we want this. Let's try now. It works. So as you see, it's really, uh, you know, normal unit test. You just try to make it run, try to test what, uh, what feels good and what feels uh, uh, guaranteeing some, uh, some uh, net for you not to fall into the abyss of bugs and weird behaviors. So that was pretty tri trivial. It would be interesting now to test um, what is copied. And for that, I think we will wait another video because um, I've spoke enough, I think. So thanks a lot for watching. Next video, we will see how to test this time if the files we copy are the good one. If we delete a file in source, it will be deleted in destination as well, uh, running the script again. And yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you will have a great rest of your day.